Hey everyone, today's episode is with Lindsay Matthews, otherwise known as Trainer Lindsay on Instagram, Facebook, across all platforms. So Lindsay is a good friend of mine. She actually, she's an amazing experienced coach herself, but she hired me for a little while to coach her on keto while she was on her um, hypothyroid healing journey. So we worked together for, I think about a year um, and have just been awesome friends since. Um, Lindsay's story is so incredible. I asked her if she would share um, kind of simultaneously her fitness journey with her fitness business journey. Cause she really is like an OG of the online training space. You know, when she started as a fitness influencer, what she shares, like there really wasn't such a thing yet, you know? So she talks about how vulnerable and scary that was to like put herself out there like that. And it's been so cool to see where her journey's taken her. I won't spoil the whole thing, but I mean, she has a thriving online coaching company with a whole team of coaches, runs um, boot camps that are super popular, online boot camps. Her website is moxiebylindsay.com. Um, it's uh, Moxie is IE and Lindsay is EY. And we'll put the link um, in the show notes. But um, you know, you probably want to join her tribe on Facebook. It's really big. There's hundreds of thousands of people in that group. And then on Instagram, um, she's always posting valuable content and it's trainer Lindsay. Um, but yeah, she shares like, it's so cool to hear the beginning of her journey of just being like scared to even become a personal trainer and that whole journey into where it's taken her now. Um, she's teamed up and is partnered with transform. So Chris and Heidi Powell, and you know, it's just been really, really cool to see her journey. I always like to joke that we have a, a mastermind of two because we're both here. We live in the same city in Utah. Um, and I see her at the gym all the time. And so it's just been so fun to share in our growth journeys together. Um, we're soul sisters for sure. <laughs> so, um, I think you guys will really enjoy this episode between two friends that have a lot of similar interests. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Here is Lindsay Matthews. Okay. Before we jump into the show, I've got a special announcement real quick, and it is about my higher retreats. We are finally rolling on this. This is a project that's been in the work for two years for me, and we are finally going. Our first higher retreat is going to be in April in Zion's National Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion, but oh man, it's in Southern Utah. It is incredible. Check out my Instagram for pictures if you haven't seen. It is just like one of the most magical places in the world. People come from all over the world to see this place. Um, so we are going to be doing it there April 21st through 24th, 2022. And I wanted to let you guys know, we are still in our early bird pricing right now. Um, we sold a lot of it. We filled more than half the retreat in our pre-sale, but we still have one shared room left. So if you want to come with somebody and save some money, jump on that. Um, I am doing this with be the wellness. They are helping me put on this retreat. Be the wellness is amazing. They're like my dream end goal of all retreats. And they've decided to help other people like me put on retreats. So it's going to be phenomenal. They're award-winning retreat, um, hosts and yeah, it's, it's going to be good. So you have to go to their website. It's going to be, be the wellness. So B E E make sure you follow them on Instagram, by the way, also, but B E E the wellness, be the wellness.com slash experiences slash higher. All of the details are there. You have pricing. Um, you can register right there on the website, all of the schedule, all of the people who are coming. We have a shaman coming to do a fire ceremony the first night. There's an amazing yoga meditation, breath work facilitator, Catherine Dixon, who is like, I don't know what to call her. My like spiritual guide in life. <laughs> um, she is facilitates the work of Byron Katie and she has an episode here on inside out health. I would highly suggest listening to that. She is a life changer. She's going to be facilitating, um, two days at the retreat. So I'm so excited to have Catherine coming. She's like my secret weapon. She's amazing. So, um, yeah, all the details are on that website. Go check it out. Take advantage of the early bird pricing we have going, um, for the next, uh, week and a half. So that will end on, I guess maybe it's a little less than that by the time you hear this, that ends on August 8th at 8 PM. So eight, eight, eight. Okay. August 8th at 8 PM mountain time is when the early bird pricing ends. So if you want to get in on that, get in on that now. Um, and yeah, if this is something that's pinging, if you feel like you need a reset, connect to nature, connect with like-minded people, take a look inside at what you got going on and leave with some tools on how to control your stress response and challenge your stressful thoughts and find out what might be going on inside of you that you're just not seeing. This is going to be amazing. We have a sh private chef coming, all gourmet paleo meals. It's going to be incredible. So um, yeah, check that out. Be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire. 
So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. All right, guys, I got my girl, Lindsay here. This is so fun. Hi. I was telling Lindsay, I'm like, we're, we'll just catch up and we'll yeah. just talk about all the fun things you guys can listen in. So Lindsay is a friend of mine. She's actually just like 10 minutes down the road, yes. um, but you guys may know her as trainer Lindsay on Instagram and Facebook. Um, one thing about Lindsay is her audience loves her so much. And I know that <laughs> because they will go out of their way to DM me and say, I found you through trainer Lindsay and I love her so much. And all these Aww. things about Lindsay. <laughs> So <laughs> they love you so much. They're um, the best. I <laughs> and I think it's, it's that mutual, like love mutual respect yes, um, that you sure. give them because, you know, we've had many conversations. We kind of have like our little mastermind of two yeah. that will talk about business. And I have seen from you, like your degree of caring. You're like, no, I want to answer their DMS. Like yes. I want to know what they're going through. I want to help them, which is For like sure. shows why you've had the success that you have because you care, Yeah, <laughs> you know, true. very true. I do care. Yeah. And so let's start where that started. Cause we have, we're, we, we always do the little emoji with the two girls in the cat outfit. Yeah, like so we're literally we're... twins. Kara and I are like, we are built from the same mold. For sure. Yep. We have so much in common. So even like, you know, through our, our own fitness transformation going from, you know, like having kids overweight, yes. like what the so crap, similar. I can't figure this out. And then we finally figured it out and we got all yep. obsessed and, you know, it goes from there. So let's, let's hear your version of the, this whole story. Okay. If you mind. Let's do it. So, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, kind of just your typical in high school, I took weightlifting classes and I love that. I was on the swim team. Um, I went to college and, you know, I did like the step class. I remember I got my first gym pass, um, my sophomore year of college. And, um, it was like, this was, was back in the day when they would give you guest passes and they didn't really keep track of them. And so we were going in like every single week and getting a free <laughs> guest pass, you know, yeah. like poor college students. <laughs> and so I got my first gym pass. Um, Loved going to the gym. I mean, I've always really lifted. I never really went through that whole cardio bunny thing because I don't personally love to like run, you know, mm -hmm. do endless amounts of cardio, but um, always loved lifting. It really started when uh, I had had, let's see, how many kids did I had? I think I had had just my first. So my kids are now, um, this summer they're turning 18, 16, and 13. So that's how old they are. So this is going back quite a ways. Um, I think my oldest was a baby. And I was like, you know, I really want to get certified to be a personal trainer, but I had this major stigma in my head of like, no, you, you don't look like a personal trainer should look like that's where I was really hung up on that. And I was like, I would be so embarrassed to like go into my gym. And, and this is like so silly retelling it. So now I'm like, who cares? Like I, it doesn't matter at all what, you know, what you look like or right. whatever, but I was really hung up on this. And so I was, you know, I was like, I want to get certified as a trainer, but I don't want to tell anybody. 
<laughs> I think there's so many people who can relate. So it's so fun to see the success that you've had. Yeah. You have like, what, like 800,000 people in your Facebook community yeah, or like something eight, like that. Yeah, yeah like so 862 like, or 650 or something like that. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. But still like huge and, you know, pushing a hundred thousand on Instagram. So it's cool to hear yeah. these beginnings because a lot of people are in that place with all these yeah. like limiting, self-limiting mindsets totally. and imposter syndrome and all that. So yes. yeah, yes, for sure. Um, and so I remember I had a couple friends that were like, you know, you should just do it. It doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. You look great. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like whatever. Um, <laughs> and she's like, okay, fine. So at this time I was kind of like, you know, I want something. My reasoning was, you know, we were a, a young family, didn't make a ton of money. Um, my husband was just barely graduated from school. I'm like, I want something I can do to make some money from home, you know? And this was kind of right when, um, online coaching was starting. So it was back in like 2003, 2004 kind of. Um, and I, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, get certified and then just write workout programs for people. Maybe look over their food logs. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't really know what I was doing. Right. Yeah. You were pioneering this whole space. Really? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And so I did and it was great and I loved it. And it was basically just like, I helped a friend and then they told their friend and they told their friend It just kind of grew. Um, and at one point I realized, you know, I really should work at a gym, which was kind of like my worst nightmare (laughs) just because like gym trainers, they, I mean, no hating on gym trainers at all, but there's kind of a stigma you know, whether you agree with it or not, there's kind of a little stereotype. And so I just did not want to be the next gold's gym trainer, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I was, I was like, okay, I want to get this one-on-one experience, learn how to connect with people, learn how to work with one person and connect with them. Um, so I thought I'd find the smallest gym in my, in my town. It was, I was down in Springville, Utah. And I found this little anytime fitness that was like tucked back in behind the mountains. I was like, I'll go there because nobody probably goes there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember when I went to an interview and this is so stupid and embarrassing, but I remember now at this point I had um, Brinley, my second, my daughter, my second kid. And she was, I think she was like six months old. And so I remember bringing her with me to an interview. So dumb <laughs> because I was kind of thinking like, this is why I don't look like a trainer. Cause I just had a baby. Like, this is my excuse, yeah. you know? And I felt like I needed to explain myself, which is so silly, but that's kind of where my head was at. I was still so hung up on this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I got the job. I was coaching people. I worked there for about two years and I loved it. Um, And it was while I was working there that um, one of my friends told me, you know, you should really start a boot camp program. Like this is kind of where the fitness industry is going is like, I don't want to say group fitness. That's been around forever, but like small group training kind of, yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. And I was like, no way. There is absolutely no way I could ever work out in front of somebody. That was my big <laughs> hang up. <laughs> and I was like, I could never be in front of a group exercising, showing them like what they should do. Like you've got to be kidding me. But of course I went home and like the idea kind of stewed in me. And I was thinking like, I mean, still here we're like, I think we had just bought our first house. And so again, money's kind of tight, you know, and I was like, well, I can make more money that way. I, you know, maybe I'll just try it. And so I remember telling myself if I got at least eight people to sign up, then I was going to do this. Like I had this whole six week program um, planned out in my head and, um, we were going to use the local park and all this kind of stuff. And so I remember the day that my eighth person signed up, I was like about had a panic attack. I was like, oh my gosh, now I actually have to do this. What am I going to do? I was like so nervous. And I remember, so I ended up doing that for about eight years. Um, I would do these, I did six week programs and then six weeks off. So it was, about, it was four per year and people loved it. And it grew from my first program. We had about eight people in just our neighborhood clubhouse. And then by the end, I only stopped because I moved up to Salt Lake County and I didn't want to start over again. Um, but by the end, we had about 175 people between wow. three different classes. Wow. So, and that was all just, there was no Facebook ads. There was nothing like that at the time. Like it was all right. just, I remember it was boots on the ground. Like I printed flyers and we'll go to different neighborhoods and take wow. flyers to doors wow. and it was just word of mouth. And it was okay. so fun. I have to stop right there. Cause this is like, you know, people it's, I love hearing this kind of stuff because people see the success that you have now and they think that they're going to start an Instagram account like today and they need to be where you're at in six months. And you're like in 2004, I started this journey. I used to put freaking papers on people's doors and on posts and things. So it's like, it's a journey. It is a journey. I love this. Okay. Keep going. 
totally a journey. And it was just so fun. Like I just loved it, but probably for the first, Oh, I don't know, like two years, maybe quite a while. I would lose sleep the night before a class. Cause we'd had a couple classes a week. Yeah. And, um, I was just so nervous yeah. of still being in front Good of people. So you. It took a while. It did not, mm. you know, but by the time I was there, I was like on fire and felt like a rock star with my little microphone in front yeah. of people. And it was just before that it would just kind of, you know, those nerves would still get mm-hmm. to me for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So fast forward now to like 2000. Okay. I kind of have two different, do we want to talk about where I started yeah. competing in here? Okay. Yeah. So this, okay. So now we're kind of talking about competing level. We'll go back to business in a minute. So this is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an embarrassing story. So it's 2010. Okay. And I was, I got a bod pod test and I don't, I mean, you know, take those for what they're worth, whatever. Um, but I remember it was my first time and I was like 18% body fat. And I thought I was like the hottest thing in the world. I was like, I'm 18% body fat. Check me out. Like I just really was like, thought I was so cool. And (laughs) at that very next day, I saw a flyer for a local NPC bikini competition. I was like, Oh, what's that? That's kind of cool. I mean, I had, I shouldn't say what's that. I had seen the sport before. Um, but I thought the figure girls were like too much. And so this NPC division, it started in 2009. So it was brand new. And um, I was like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, it's on Saturday. Cool. Sweet. I'm 18% body fat. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which back then was like, you're competitive, you know, like it wasn't as psycho as it yeah, is now. It wasn't so- as psycho as it is now. <laughs> but I had no idea what I was doing. And so I bought like a, a suit off the rack. I went to one posing class. I bought some um, tan on Amazon. We did it myself the night before and it was like a disaster. (laughs) And I walked in there and I was like, holy crap. Okay. I had no idea what I was getting into. It was seriously so, so embarrassing, but I left there thinking like, okay, I want to do this again, but I want to do it right this time. I want to have a coach. I want to do all the right things, you know? Yep. And so that's kind of where that started. I did end up competing through, um, I competed through 2010. I tried to coach myself, which did not go well. Um, I was just not experienced in coaching that kind of mm-hmm. pro, like that kind of protocol, you know, right. and I just feel like it's hard to coach yourself in a bodybuilding competition, you know, Definitely. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I remember I hired this one coach. He was, I think he's still coaching. So I won't say his name, but he's in like the Midwest. And I think it was like 30 bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. get what you pay for, for yeah. sure. Because I think every three weeks he just emailed me a meal plan. And I remember in one of them, it had tuna fish for breakfast. And I was like, there's no mayo in this. Like, what am I supposed to do with this tuna fish for breakfast? And so I could, I could do his meal plans for like a week. And then I would just fall completely off track. Yeah. And I didn't really know much about tracking macros at the time. I was just trying to stick to this meal plan, you know? Yeah. Um, so that didn't go very well. <laughs> um, and that was through 2011 or 10. That was through 2010. In 2011, I actually had my first coach who taught me that you can get lean eating foods you love. That was really my first like experience with that because it wasn't a macro tracking thing that still wasn't really, that's kind of when I was learning to track my macros, but it was more of a, it was meal plan based, but it was like swapping. So it was mm-hmm. like, sure, you don't want chicken. Okay, that's fine. We have this right. calculator. You can sub in beef, pork, right. fish which is how I like to eat anyway. You know, um, you don't want sweet potato right now. Okay. You can have this rice, you can have fruit, you can have tortilla, whatever it is you want, you know, which is like way better for micronutrients too. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. To not eat the same foods all the time. Right. Um, and so I was going to nationals. Okay. So I was doing bikini, going to nationals. I went to nationals in Vegas and it was awful. Oh my gosh. I hated every second of it. It was so hot, like obviously it was in July in Las yeah. Vegas and you have this awful tan on and oh, the biggest man. thing that hit me was like, and I know Tara, you and I have talked about this because this is still kind of the same. We're like, all of these girls look incredible. How yeah. many you choose? Like maybe one judge likes brown hair and one likes right. blonde hair. Like this is so dumb. And like, I'm sitting <laughs> here wasting all this time and money and stress. And like, at that time I was being very selfish about it. I did. I went, I kept competing, which I'll keep talking about, but I did learn how to not take so much from my family. It was, it was all about me and my food yeah. and my timing at that time. I right. got way better at dieting, you know, over the years, but uh-huh. um, it was the sacrifice at that time was not worth it. I was like, I am never doing this again. I'm done, you know? Yeah. And, um, so 
but after that, I just, I like having a coach. I'm a big believer in coaching. Yeah. I like okay. having goals and a coach and just reporting to someone, whether I need it or not, really. I just like it. It's right. a hobby I have, I guess. I think it's um, a lot of success. I always have some sort of coach in one, yeah. at least one area of my life. I think it's just yeah. a success habit. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. pushes you and brings new things to light. And yeah. Yes. Whatever, whatever you want to work on. Hire right. a coach that knows more than you. Right. That's yep. how Tara and I met. I want to be keto. So I found the best keto coach ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I, then I got like a best friend out of it. Probably. You know, yes, like it, was, it was fun. It was fun. We'll get to that part. <laughs> yes. We will. Um, okay. So then 2012, I hired a coach. Um, he was a local coach. So again, I won't say his name. I think Tara knows what I'm talking about though. Um, <laughs> and he, I was, uh, I think I was like building or maintaining what I wasn't dieting at the time, but I told him, I was like, I kind of want to like lose five or 10 pounds. Can we kind of switch gears? And he was like, sure. All you got to do is cut out all your carbs and all your fats. And I was like, well, like what? <laughs> I know enough to know that I probably shouldn't do that. But at the same time in your head, you're like, well, I hired this coach. He like, says it's okay. Yeah. Right. He says it's okay. What do I know? He's more experienced than me. So let's try it. And that's right. kind of when my binge eating started. Um, and I, I use that word very lightly. I probably shouldn't even use that word. It I know was, what you mean. Yeah, Overeating. Was, yeah. Yes, Overeating. I wasn't to the point where I would drive through all the drive throughs and eat all the Big Macs. Right. It was just, it was really like I would do two or three days of my 1100 calories protein only, mind you, for like a lifestyle diet. This was not competing. This was just wanting to lose five pounds for the summer kind of thing, you know? So infuriating. Yes. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so, and then like the third day would come or the fourth day would come and it's, it would just start with like one cookie, you know? And then I'm like, well, kind of want some ice cream with the cookie, or I just want some right. butter with dipped into the chocolate chips. That was my big one. And then it was, well, I'm starting over tomorrow with protein anyway. So let's just give this Go all for it. Yeah, exactly. And, for it. and so many people do that all the yeah. time just from being diet mentality, yeah, you know, but exactly. you're also facing like your body is like, please freaking eat fat yes. at least, you and know, the whole thing of peanut butter with yeah. chips because you want some carbs and some fats. <laughs> yeah. Your body's starving for it. Yes. Like on more than just from more than just a body fat standpoint, it's the right. brain power cell membranes, you know, <laughs> like yes. yeah. awful. And so I did that for a while. Like even I stopped working with that coach, but I, and I stopped doing the whole protein only thing after a month or two. Um, but I still kind of had those habits. Like I totally right. remember going to like a neighborhood potluck and I remember going and being so like air quotes good and like bringing my right. food or eating healthy, whatever that right. meant to me at the time. But then going home, I remember this very clearly. I remember I had to go home and get a diaper or something for my, my baby. And I, I was like, Oh, I'm home alone. Okay. Yeah. I just want to chip. Yep. I just want this. And then 20 minutes later, and like a thousand calories later, I'm just like, oh, what right. have I done? Like it was yeah. it's always the behind closed doors thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so those habits were super hard to break for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say super for it. It lasted past me working with this coach. So this is in like 2012 ish. Yeah. Come 2013. Okay. So here's kind of where we twist a little bit. Um, I'm competitive and I've talked to Tara about this. I am not coordinated at all. I'm not <laughs> athletic by any means. And so I've never really, like, I was a swimmer in high school, but I, people, people who come to me at the gym and they'd be like, are you in dance? And I'm like, why on earth would you think I'm in dance? Like, that's ridiculous. And they're like, well, you're so fit. I'm like, what does that have to do with going to dance? Like, I, you're like, this is just pure hypertrophy. Yeah, like, like, what, what are you talking about? I can't kick a ball. Like, I, another thing we were at the gym and our gym friends had like the city kickball team and they were like the best team in the city. And they were like, we need another couple for the 4th of July tournament. Can you guys sub in? Cause at least this couple's out of town. I'm like, I don't think you want that. I don't think you want us like, and, you know, and so I was practicing kickball in my backyard with this big ball. And I was like, my husband Brandon is like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh I need to practice God. because they want to win this tournament and they asked us to sub. And what if I can't kick the ball? And so oh. anyway, I'm not athletic. That's where I'm going. And this is actually like a kind of running joke amongst bodybuilders. So I love <laughs> it because they look really fit because it's all hypertrophy. So they look like these like fitness specimens, yeah. but they will always joke. Like when people ask them to help move and stuff, they're like, 
oh, oh no, these are just for show. Like yeah. <laughs> this isn't functional at all. Exactly. I know yeah. it's too bad. Um, so I found like I was, my, my heart was kind of getting pulled back to competing. Cause that was something that I did well at and I could be competitive yeah. and it was almost, it was like a game or a sport to yeah. me that I was good at, you know, and right. it feels good to be good at something. Right. And so, um, at this time I was kind of getting, I, I kind of did want to try figure. And at this time figure was not like what it is now. It was yeah. kind of like how bikini is now. Um, I had a friend that was like, Hey, I know this coach. Um, he's one of our mutual friends. His name is Mike Jackson. And he was like, he, he coaches in a really good, healthy way. And I'm like, sweet, I'll meet him. Um, I started working with him and he is the one who it was my first reverse diet ever. I didn't know what it was at the time. Um, we got my calories up to like 2,400 with two untracked meals a week. And it's nice. really the last time I binged really like awesome. that was real. Like it, it nipped that in the bud because I realized like when you're eating enough food, you don't have those urges, <laughs> right? You know, and <laughs> right. I, remember I didn't, I did not want to look at the scale. So I actually, um, I mean, when you're working with a coach, sometimes you need that feedback. And so I would stand on the scale, I would close my eyes and take a picture of it. And I would cover my screen on my phone and I would text it to him and I would hurry up and delete it because I really didn't want to see it. So someone might say, well, couldn't you look in like your deleted photos? And I'm like, well, yeah, but I didn't want to know, Wow. you know, and I did that for wow. six months wow. as he got my calories up and I did gain weight. I gained probably like seven pounds, which is nothing, but I gained, I gained some weight, which probably would have messed with me. And I wouldn't have wanted to continue knowing myself back then, you know, Yeah. But I didn't look and I increased my food and I honestly like haven't really binged like that sense. So it's pretty yeah. cool. It's 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 when you're starving and your your mindset also is so restricted, you know, and then hormones come into play, sleep yeah. deprivation, stress. It's just like uh -huh. it's it's just it, I I I always I'm like always telling people on initial calls. I'm like everybody does that. Like surprise, like yeah. anyone who's tried dieting before went off the rails at some yeah. point, you know. So sure. I'm glad you're talking about it because people have like it, it, then it turns into this secret thing you're talking about because it's like, yeah. like there's all this shame around it. Uh -huh. you know, before you know it got like, yeah, like a 20 year long, like disordered eating pattern that right. it's like, actually you're normal. And there's some, some really easy fixes here, but yes. first, like, you just need to know that this is normal so we can talk about it, you know, yeah. so appreciate yeah. you sharing that. Okay. Yeah, let's, sure. right, let's keep going. Um, okay. So at this point I started competing in figure. Um, it was pretty uneventful. I won a lot of local shows and I didn't really place nationally because I wasn't really big enough. And so, um, at that point I was like, okay, I think I'm going to be done with figure. So during that whole part, um, I was actually approached So kind of back to the business side. Um, I was teaching a boot camp, and I was approached by a, com a supplement company named uh, called ideal shape. And yeah. they were like, we're looking for a face of the company. Actually, they came and they wanted to do like a social media campaign with me. Um, they're like, we're just highlighting different fitness people. Um, in like, I don't think influencer was even a word at that point. Like, yeah. Um, wait, can I pause you real quick? Yeah, cause yeah. like, cause you're like, seriously, right at the front of be, being a fitness influencer, right? Yeah. Like how many people did you even know when you started trainer Lindsay that I, were doing that? Right. Nobody. Like, it, I was so embarrassed when I started my Facebook. Yeah. Page, I was like, I can't tell anybody that I know because who am I to start like a Facebook right. page? Like. Having right. Cause date. it was like, so it was, new. It was such yeah. a new concept, you yes. know, it was yes. like, I remember totally it, here not. in Utah, it was like you and like Drew Manning and like, not very many. Yeah. It was there a new thing. Right. right. And it was so <laughs> embarrassing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you though. Like risk and, you know, you take yeah. the, risk and reap the rewards, you it's know, true. you're willing to put right. yourself out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so they came and they're like, we're going to do a little photo shoot. We'll do a video shoot of you at bootcamp. I'm like, sure. That sounds fun. You know, we'll get some I don't know, little, little photo shoot out of it. Um, and so they, we came, we did it. It was great. A couple of weeks later, um, the girl who did it for me, like their social media person, she was like, Hey, the, they're actually looking for a face of the company. And they were wondering if you'd be interested, you would like, um, create some online programs. You would, um, help launch. They were launching an ideal fit, which was a, like more of a performance line versus like a everyday type of line. Um, and I was like, Oh, no, thanks. I told them no. And I was like, I've got a good thing going. My kids are all little. I don't really want like a job type of thing, yeah. you know? And I was like, but I have a couple of friends who might be interested. And so I gave them like some friends' phone numbers and I'm like, okay, sounds good. And like a week later, she calls back again. She's like, hey, they really like just, they just want you. Like <laughs> they don't want anybody else. Can you just come in and talk to them and tell them, tell them no. So I don't have to keep being the middle man. I was like, okay, that's fine. So I went in there <laughs> and I met them and talked to them and they were basically like, 
like, no, we want you. And I was like, oh, okay. What, why do you want me? <laughs> what? No, like, we can do whatever you want. You can work from home. Well, like whatever, whatever works for you. And I was like, okay. And so I just met the people. I learned about kind of their mission and how, how dedicated they were to helping people. And I was like, yeah, I can get on board with this actually. Actually, I want to do this. And so, and I walked away with, with the job. And so that was huge for me, huge for my confidence, huge for like getting my name out there. It was an amazing, amazing experience. And so, um, while working there, we did launch ideal fit the next year in 2015, which, um, ended up being a huge brand. We actually took it international and I went to Europe and, um, we launched over there. Um, I created the, uh, a 15 day challenge, the trainer Lindsay's 15 day fit body challenge that at the time when I quit has been downloaded about 900,000 times. Wow. And so it's a pretty big one. I didn't um, know that. That's I, huge. Yeah. And then I created a few paid programs, six week fit body challenge, six week fit body sculpt, and then a bikini challenge, um, wrote some eBooks. I mean, everything they said, we went, we were on like news shows doing all sorts of fun things, wrote a book. Um, and yeah. And so that was, it was so much fun. So I worked there from 2004, 13, I think, or 14 to 2018. And so during that time, I moved. Um, and that was kind of when I stopped doing boot camp. I moved up here in 2015. And um, let's see, that was when I was about stopping competing in figure. And this was when I had my first kind of hormone little, little thing. So I competed in figure in 2015. Um, I got really lean. Um, I was, I mean, just we can start talking body weights just so people get an idea of how much I fluctuated. Yeah, yeah. So I usually maintain like 140 to 145. Um, and I was competing at 125. Um, and I held it there for probably, I mean, it wasn't hugely long, but it was probably like six weeks between all of my shows where I was like 125. Mm-hmm. So much leaner than my body had ever really been. Right. Um, and then in 2016, I can't remember how I noticed it. I think I was, oh, you know, I was actually trying to compete again. I thought I was going to keep competing. And I wasn't losing. I was trying to prep and nothing was happening. And that's the first time I met with a doctor and you're like, well, your thyroid's a little low. Let's just put you on some thyroid medication. Um, I stopped, I pulled out of the shows because at this point I was actually working with pro physiques. And so, um, I was working with them. They're like, you know, uh, let's, let's bump the show back. Okay. No, we got to bump the show back. No, you know, and then I had like a, a hard talk with Damien and Whitney and they're like, we really think we should wait. And and they're amazing. You know, they're amazing. Yeah. Too. Yeah. That's who I worked with guys. Yeah, yeah. And Lindsay's the one who referred me. So yeah. 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 I love them so much. And so they yeah, helped me decide great. not to compete that year. And, um, and then they helped me lifestyle diet. So I kind of, we paused the shows. We, um, got on some hormone medication and kind of de-stressed things like that. And then I was able to lose a couple pounds and that was great. So, um, I did not compete again. I thought I would never do it again. So I was like that, you know, that was too hard on my body. I'm not ever doing this again. And 2017 was like, I kind of say it was like my glory year. (laughs) It's I I did not really track macros. I was doing a lot of running endurance training. I was working out with this like Spartan training group and made some great friends doing that. Um, And so we were doing a lot of activity. Like we were training for a Spartan beast. I ended up getting hurt, hurting my foot. And so I didn't do the race, but um it was a lot of like, you know, big trail runs on the weekends and stuff like that. And so that was a little cushion. So I didn't really need to track my macros and I maintained like pretty lean, like 137 to 141, somewhere around there. It's a little leaner than normal for me. Um, but it was great. Like my mindset was so good. I, I ate out on the weekends. I ate whatever I wanted to. I didn't really worry about that. Um, I was doing extra like exercise, you know, so that probably helped out a little bit. Um, and so I had thought I fixed myself. <laughs> and right. we know what comes right. next. <laughs> <laughs> I was so in 2018, I was like, I am bored. Like, I need to do something, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like, You're very see. driven, obviously, super goal oriented. And yeah. we've talked about this a lot. So right. it makes sense. You're like, I just want something to work towards. <laughs> exactly. And so I was like, well, let's compete again, but let's do bikini this time. So like I said, bikini had kind of grown like what figure was. It was kind of the same kind of look. My body doesn't build a ton of muscle, which I didn't want lots more muscle anyways. Um, and so my plan was to do one show and have it be like an experience. I'll tell the story on social media, create some fun YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. That was it. Right. And if that had been it, 
I think I would have been totally fine. And the rest of the story probably wouldn't have happened. Um, I prepped, I did great. One thing to note though, which is so weird. And I still can't wrap my head around this is I lost my period the first month. I don't really get it because my calories were still at like 1700. My fats were still high. I don't, I don't know. And I have yeah. lifestyle dieted like since then. So I don't know why my body was like, I think you're doing something wrong. <laughs> I know. I wonder if it was just like the emotional pressure and Maybe. stress of like getting back into that mode it's and then true. a lot of inflammation from training or something, you know? Yeah, like, I don't, it could yeah. be. That's a good point. It's interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I competed. We started prepping in January. I competed in June and I did really well. I won my show. And so I was like, well, let's just do it one more time. Like just one more time because yeah. it was a show in Idaho, like the next week. And you might as well wear the suit twice. I bought I know. It. I feel, <laughs> right. I feel like you're like, I'm winning these suckers. But like you yeah. said, it feels good to like win. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. And you're getting yeah, your suits else, like right? thousands so, of dollars. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so I did the one in Idaho and I won that one, my class in that one too. And, um, the, the judges were like, you know, you should really go to nationals. And I was like, and of course, like all you need is someone to say that. And you're like, Oh, should I? Cause it kind of right. was like a little bit of an ego stroke too. Totally. I mean, you're good. winning. I, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe let's do that. So I looked at the show schedule. Um, I ended up to make a long story short, I ended up competing in three national shows that year. Um, in the second one, I placed second and it was kind of, it was kind of traumatic for me because <laughs> I was placed in the middle, middle of first call outs, moved people around me. They didn't move me. I had thought I had won. Like, yeah, as humbly as I can say that I thought I had won. Right. Like, there were coaches I knew backstage that were like, you won this great yeah, job. Yeah. I had known for years. They're like, oh my gosh, you did it. Celebrating with yeah. me. Like I spent the day thinking that I won. Oh my and gosh. Then, yeah. And yeah, then that's a little crushing. Comes and they call me out for second place. And it was like, I was, I lost, you know? Right, right, like, right. If I hadn't thought I won, I would have been thrilled with second place, like over the moon, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I had spent the day thinking I won. And so of course I was like crushed, you know? And so then even if I had stopped there, I think I might've been fine. But the next and last national show was, oh, it was a whole six weeks later. It was and that's what really did me in, I think. Even though we um, we reversed that, we added food and we cut down on cardio, I think the problem was still that I stayed that freaking 125, 122. I was actually 116, I think, Whoa. on the last show. I just was withering away, you know? Wow, yeah. yeah. I mean, if your baseline, like where your like, set point, people like to call it, like where yeah. your body likes to fall is like somewhere between 140 and 150, 116 yep. is insane. Yes, insane. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was that last six weeks that was so hard. And that was the six weeks where I was like, just kind of like numb throughout the day. And just, yeah. like, I remember like sitting with my kids outside because it was summertime. Um, they'd be roasting marshmallows and having s'mores and I'd just be like, when can I go to bed so right. that I can wake up tomorrow and eat because I'm hungry. Right. Oh <laughs> man. Yeah. Marshmallows, you know, exactly. That's exactly where I got at the end of mine too, yeah. was just like, can we, can today just be over at six yeah. o'clock too early to go to bed? Cause yes, I just don't exactly. want to like live through the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. And then I found myself just thinking like, I mean, when you're competing, you think in terms of, you know, four weeks out, three weeks out, six weeks till this all. And I was like, I'm like wishing my life away. Like yeah. how many more weeks until this? I'm like, no, I should be like cherishing this time with my kids and with yeah. like, why am I just waiting for this date and just can't wait for this date? And then it's over and you're like, so disappointed. I don't know. I just didn't right. like that. Hundred percent. I yeah, yeah, it's you you can't really understand it till you're like living in it day to day. But yeah. it's like you definitely get a profound sense of like, what is this even for? I just want to yeah. be happy. I right. just want to be happy. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and like you talked about it too. Like there's, you know, an ego part of being so lean. Like people come up to you and like, oh my yep. gosh, can you work out? And do you like are you competing soon? And like you get all this attention. Yep, it's, it's very addicting. It it's good. Like, it totally, especially if you've never had that in your life. And yes. then all of a sudden it's like, you're getting stopped in stores and everywhere you go and your business is blowing up and yeah. everybody yeah. wants to work with you. And it's just like, Oh, I'm valuable now, apparently because I look yes. like this. Right. Yeah. So it's and a crazy like, okay, so thing. To go right. Yeah. Yep. And it's it teaches a, it's, you that that's what people want. Yep. So it's a, gets taken away then yep. it gets really hard. Right. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, okay. So I competed, um, through September. Um, 
we were, I was working with pro physiques and I, I didn't do, so I placed in set place second. And then I was like, okay, like we're going to win this next one. We're going to win. We're going to go pro. I placed, uh, what did I place? Eighth, I think. So that was disappointing, but that's how it is when you're competing. You never know. It's always yeah. all over the place. So it's, right. it is what it is. Um, and so we we're reversing. I think the plan was even to compete again the next year if I wanted to. Um, but we were reverse dieting about like end of October. Um, my body kind of plateaued at like high one thirties. And I was like, sweet. I think I'm done. Like, this is my reverse. I'm back to maintenance. Like, this is great. I did it. Thanks guys. Like see you next year kind of thing. You know? uh-huh. And then like four weeks later, I started gaining. And so this was like starting at like 118 or so up to like 138, which that weight gain, I 100% expected. Right. And wanted. Right. You know, I did yeah. not want to stay that lean. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to stay wishing my life away lean. <laughs> no, no. And so we're in like November now. Um, I start gaining some weight. And I'm like, okay, well, this is fine. I was not reverse dieting anymore. I was at about 2000 calories. I was at like my, around my maintenance ish. Um, and I was gaining and I was like, why am I gaining? Okay. And so like every, it was literally every single week, like a pound, half a pound, two pounds, never trended down ever. Measurements were always going up. Um, on Christmas day, I did get my period back almost a year later. And it was like the best Christmas present I could ask for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think I was probably one, probably like, like 145 at that point, yeah. high one forties, maybe somewhere around there. And, um, then I just kind of kept gaining every single week. Come like February, I was panicking. Uh, I mean, I had, I was kind of panicking the whole time, let's be honest. Um, but I think I was like low one fifties and I was like, what at this point I was like crying. I was like, what is going on? Like I delivered my first kid in the one sixties. If that puts things into right. perspective, you know, my second and third were like one eighty. but, um, it was extra weight that I was not used to just gaining for right. apparently no reason, you yeah. know? Um, and so I got bl- blood work done. I didn't know near as much about blood work as I do now. Cause I like dove into it, learning about it. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, well, this isn't good. Like my thyroid looks low. That was kind of all I knew at that point was like thyroid and cortisol. Um, like cortisol seems high. And that's when I met you, Tara, was at Drew's party. Yeah. And, um, and I, at this time I was kind of like, you know, I kind of want to try keto mainly because like, I'm a coach. I've never done keto. I kind of want to try it and see what it's like. And also I was like, you know, I've tried everything else and like, yeah. maybe, maybe this could stop my fat gain, you know? And so yeah. I think I don't know if I talked to you that night about it, or if we talked later, um, but I was like, do you think that keto could help me with my thyroid or not? And what did you tell me? I don't even remember. I said, I've worked with a couple people that it has. It's kind of, I was like in the research, keto is like everyone that's like traditionally what's taught nutrition would be the opposite approach you would take with hypothyroidism. It's like, you have to have carbs, you know? Um, but we, I had recently, pretty recently before I met you, like started experimenting with a couple people because I was curious about the blood sugar regulating effect of, Mm -hmm. of keto in regards to helping with that cortisol. So with my approach, I had been trying this, let's go through a phase of keto, see if we can and help heal the gut, take out inflammatory things. Was that when you were just starting like keto in and out or had you been doing that for a while? Um, I think like I had been doing it with clients. I can't remember when the program came yeah, out, but yeah. it wasn't that if it was out, it wasn't that old, uh-huh. but it was mostly, I was like, let's rush your body with ketones and see what happens, you know, especially with the gut. Cause often those, that inflammation goes down was what we were trying. So anyway, you can go ahead and share yeah. the rest of yeah. that. So, um, yeah. So I remember you saying like, well, traditionally, like you know, your thyroid needs carbs, but let's try it. I think that we've seen some research recently about it. Um, and so we did. And, um, to, I mean, I don't even know where to dive into different things we've got. I mean, it totally helped my gut. I had spent years and years and years feeling bloated daily, um, constipated every single day, like not pooping very much. So it helped my gut a ton just to not have grains, I think for a little bit and not have the carbs, just kind of clean me out, help blood sugar. Do you remember yeah. like when yeah. I would have carbs in or when I would have vegetables in, like my blood sugar would be like over a hundred, I think if I'm remembering yep. right. 
Yeah. Cause that, that chronic cortisol that you're experiencing it creates insulin resistance, you know? And so yeah. I was like, let's fix the gut. Cause I think, you know, most ish health issues are gut inflammation related for sure. Yeah. Especially if there's gut inflammation, it's like, well, that's the first plan of attack. So that's why I think, you know, you're, you're, it, it was the healing effect of keto that I was trying yes. to get with you. And I was like, don't worry. I love carbs. I know you love carbs. Yeah. We will have carbs again, but let's get, yes. let's heal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You even did carnivore. You did carnivore. Carnivore for a month. Okay, that was let me gangster. Tell, let me tell why we did that. So <laughs> this was weird. Um, we were looking at cortisol, right? And we did that four point cortisol test. Um, yeah. and it was it was high. What it, happened it, first? Oh, I got this sore on my lip. Do you remember that? Yeah. I got a sore on my lip and I was getting rashes. Yeah. And, and my joints were hurting. And I was like, yeah. oh crap, what is happening to me? And I was talking to my mom, and my mom has rheumatoid arthritis, yep. and she has some autoimmune diseases, and I was like, yep. no. I am not getting an autoimmune disease. Yeah, <laughs> which keto, a lot of people do keto to help fight yes. autoimmune issues and, and, and rheumatoid arthritis specifically as well. Right. So I was like, what can I do nutritionally to before? Because my mom was like, you know, just go meet with a doctor, take some tests. I'm like, I don't even want to know. La, 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 la. I'm just going to, that you know, keep doing <laughs> keto. And I had these sores and rashes. And I think yeah. that's when we were like, well, let's try carnivore. Yeah. Let's just see if it yeah. helps because like, let's, and I, at the point or at the time I was like, I will do anything yep. to see if I can get rid of this stuff without yeah. going to a doctor to tell me I have an autoimmune disease. Exactly. You know? Yep. Yep. And carnivore was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know oh, that the, the discipline skills that you learned from competing definitely came into play because yes, you yes. were so good about maneuvering through that process. It was and so hard. Like, it was funny, <laughs> when you think that like, uh, what was it like sausage things? What are those? What, what the word is leaving me? Like, just like, uh, like a brat work. Yeah. Like a brat, like brats or Kielbasa. Something. Yeah. Yeah. When you think that that's like your treat for the day, <laughs> 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 then you know you're like eating pretty crazy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But it, but it helped so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It did. And I remember we did one, we would one blood test. Uh, and the results came back. And do you remember like they were off the charts high? And we were like freaking out. Like, what is happening? Am I dying? What's going on? And like the doctor called me the next day and he was like, I don't know what's going on with this. I just talked to the lab though. Do you happen to be using a cortisone cream? I was like, actually, I am on my lip. I was putting cortisone cream on my lip and spitting into a test tube. And so don't do that if you want to get a good, accurate cortisol reading. Yeah. I remember I was like, oh my gosh. I was like frantic. I'm going yeah. crazy. I'm like, oh, what is going on with her? It was like sky high. It was, I don't remember the level. It was like, it was like 4,000. <laughs> <It was, laughs> when you got like, like low teens, it was like 4,000. Yeah. Guys, so yeah. she's referring to like cortisol test. She's using cortisone cream on yes. her lip for this sore and spitting into it. So her yeah. reading came back like really high. It was scary for, yeah. it was scary for like 24 hours until we yeah. look in the lab that like this basically isn't possible something must have happened and then I'm like oh right. okay <laughs> this isn't possible that's always nice here. right um, and so yeah so basically my cortisol was high and so that's when Tara was like you know maybe we need to be done with keto maybe yeah. bringing cortisol down or maybe adding carbs back in will bring your cortisol down I'm like okay I'm game for that because well, and because your, yeah. your, you had your blood sugar numbers had improved since oh, the, yeah. that's the right. carnivore as well. So I knew you were ready for it. And that's all, that was always where I was trying to get you because, uh, you did the neurotyping test too, and you were type three and no, I yeah. really don't know what I'm talking about unless they've worked with me, but yeah. it, you, you, they're prone to the highest cortisol and the, carbs, eating carbs consistently can help prevent the rise of cortisol and adrenaline, but it's, you know, it's like a catch 22 situation. Cause if you already have blood sugar dysregulation, the approach I take is let's heal, let's heal that quickly yeah. by mm -hmm. doing keto for a while, but then as quickly as possible, we want to get back into those consistent carbs. So yeah, that's where we were going. Yeah. There. So that's where we were at. And, um, also through this time, just so people know, I did not lose any weight during keto. I yep. continued to gain. So I hit my highest was 165, um, in July and I kind of held that. And that was a really hard time for me that I was crying all the time. I was really like, Tara was such a huge help and like coach for me because she, we were really diving into like, why does this matter so much? You yeah. know? And, and I, it just did like, <laughs> I had like, yeah. like kind of like what we were talking about, like when you get so much praise and attention 
for how yeah. good your body looks. And then it's immediately, not immediately over nine months or so taken away from you completely right. and you're on the other end of the spectrum. Yep. It's really hard emotionally. Yeah. And, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's hard to know if you haven't gone through something like that, but when you're getting so many rewards for something and then all the, and that quickly for it to flip like that, it's a lot to process emotionally. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you, I was like, okay, I don't even want to talk health stuff anymore. Like let's dive into this. Like, yeah, the the emotional part of it all. Yeah, for sure. And then, so we added carbs back in and I remember, I remember it was early September, which ironically was exactly a year from my last show. Exactly. 52 weeks. (laughs) on like exactly a year and wow. I remember I sit on the scale and I was like, huh, it's down a pound. Like that's strange. Yeah. Interesting. And I was like, ah, it'll be back up next week, whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah. sit yeah. on the scale again the next week. And I was like, it's down another pound. And this time we were just trying to like, listen to my hunger levels. Yeah. I wasn't really hard dieting, but I was in a little bit of a deficit. I think we were trying to see if we could get stuff going. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like anything crazy. I don't even think I was tracking macros. I think we were just kind of Training. And I also have to give you credit because you dialed back your training, even though yes. that's hard when you're used yes. to lots and lots of training, you know, uh-huh. you dialed that back. You did a really good job of like being able to let go of yes. patterns and change them. Right. So yeah. you, it was throughout basically- that time, we took multiple like weeks off from the gym and yep. stuff like that when we yep. days yeah, off sure. walking days and all that. Yep. Yeah. Cause yep. it's uh, the way I look at it. It's like when your body's struggling, adding more inflammation, adding more stress. It's just like brushing teeth with Oreos. It's like the, the, the actual oh, less funny. is more. Yeah. 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 It's a healing. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. No, you're good. And so starting then in December or in September, every week I would just kind of lose a little bit on inches, scale, everything. And through that fall, I lost about 10 pounds yep. pretty effortlessly. I don't, I don't say effortlessly because I was, I was aware and I was being conscious but it wasn't hard. It almost like quote fell off sort of, which is kind yeah. of what people told me people. I have had many competitor friends who've been through the same thing. And they were like, for me, it took a year yep. and then it just kind of started coming off like without really trying super hard. And so yeah. that's definitely what happened. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of hit a little bit of a plateau in January and I kind of was maintaining, I think I was around like low one fifties at this point, maybe mid one fifties, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then let's see what happened then. Then last year was basically just, you know, focusing on sleep. I continued to like, I reverse dieted again because we were eating. Like, I think at that point, so come in January, when I hit a plateau, I started tracking again, if I'm remembering correctly. And I wasn't really losing. And this was kind of going into COVID too. So I think my stress was going back up. Like Mm -hmm. I remember when the, the day you probably remember the day that our governor was like, your kids will not go back to school. I was like, oh, what? Yeah. And I yeah. think they started gaining weight again. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stress, you know, and that's, yes. that's what this whole thing boils down to too. Cause you know, even after we stopped working together and yeah. I would see you at the gym all the time, I'm like, dude, Lindsay, it's like, finally, I like, cause I, it's with hyperthyroidism always it's, it takes time for the body to know that it's safe again. And so it's yes. all about like that, like queen energy of like, I deserve sleep. I deserve food. I deserve rest. I, you know, and yeah. you're, <laughs> that's what we would talk about it. And you're like, yeah, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping, yeah. you know, yes. but yeah, now, but then COVID I'm, I'm came. Not and it's really, yeah. I'm not do like when I was competing and also when I was working at ideal fit, I had to be to work at eight thirty, yeah. So I had to go and take and work out before the kids got up. And it was normal for me to wake up at four 45, right. or 15, somewhere around there. Yeah. And I would go to work and then I would come home. I would work there for five hours or so come home. And I was driving kids around. Like my life is completely different now. You yeah. know, like I work completely from home on my own hours. My gym's around the corner. Yeah. Um, it's just like totally different. So now I sleep like seven and a half, eight hours a night. Yeah. And I have kind of gone through a couple phases, um, of a diet and a reverse. And I was able to lose another like 10 or so. Um, and now I'm kind of in that 145 ish range and right where your body likes to be. Yeah. 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 And, and I love this cause it's just, it's taking time to heal, you know, yes. like taking time and attention. It, it's, it, it's self-loving too. It's like here body, I will change my habits. Yeah. What do you need? I'm willing to, to work with you and see what you respond well to. Yes. So you did such a good job of that yeah. during that time. I also want to hit on the business thing real quick before oh, we yeah. end yes. because, I forgot because, about that. because here you went from, you know, trainer, Lindsay, the bikini physique champion, yeah. like 116 pounds or whatever, yeah. but your business really took off 
the most when when, you, when yeah. you were at in the peak of this hypothyroid yes. ordeal. Right. So yeah, in 2019, um, Ideal Fit was acquired by, or they were acquired a few years before, but that's when I decided to leave the company and I was going to go out on my own, which I had been throughout that whole time I had been online coaching. And I even got to the point, um, in like 2015, when I had an assistant coach, cause I had so many clients. And so I had been coaching the entire time, but when I was working at Ideal, I wasn't actively trying to find new clients. If they came, they came, if they didn't, they didn't, it was, it wasn't like my sole focus kind of thing. And so when I left there, I was like, okay, I'm going all in on my own business. I rebranded. Um, I started doing these uh, virtual boot camps or like 12 week programs. Yeah. Um, I, I hired a marketing company, which Tara introduced me to. And during this time I was in my heaviest weight. I was actually yeah. in the process of gaining. And so it like my marketing company helped me tell these stories and yeah. they were like, you know, encouraged me to be vulnerable and open yeah. up. And that's not hard for me. I've always kind of been an open book, yeah. but it was them telling me, you know, yeah, tell these stories. It's relatable and all this stuff. And my business just took off. Yep. It took off. Yeah. And you yeah. know, what's so cool is I didn't know this beginning part of your story about how you were like, I don't want to like this. Yeah. Not till today about how you were so scared to like be in front of people mm -hmm. or be a personal trainer. Cause you didn't think you looked fit enough. Yeah. And then you went through like the epitome of like bikini competitor fit, fitness. Right. And then once you got, you know, you were going through weight gain and all that is when everything took off because it was freaking relatable. Yeah. It's so yeah. beautiful because it's like that story that existed back then. Yeah. It was never true. It right. was never true that you right. would, your, your body wasn't enough to help yes. people with their health or whatever, right. you know, right. so, so it was crazy. cool how it ended out that way. Yeah. So, yeah <laughs> now I have um, 10 coaches who work for me. We do boot camps. Yeah. I have, I actually have a program that helps new, co I mentor new coaches in, in marketing and in coaching. I'm with my marketing so my cool. business partner. And so, yeah, we have all sorts of fun stuff we're working on now. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Like, I mean, Lindsay's boot camps are, they're very super popular. You yeah, know, I know yeah. everybody gets excited when one of your boot camps come out and then you have all your programs, your coaching team. Yeah. It's been amazing to see you scale your business and Thank just you. help more people and provide that space for more coaches to come in. Yes, oh, and then so also fun. there's the, um, transform. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, um, after I left ideal fit, I was like, you know, my husband actually really wanted, he's like, we should start our own supplement company. I was like, ew, no, I want nothing to do with that. He was like, no, I, I think it'd be cool. And, and so we were kind of like, maybe we could. And we were kind of in talks with a manufacturer that's local here that I'm friends with um, for about a year, working on some formulas, um, finally found something we loved. Um, so we're like, okay, let's go for it. We used our savings to fund the project. And we got, um, we launched some four amazing supplements Yes. Um, chocolate protein and vanilla protein. Tara loves the vanilla one. I'm really obsessed like. with yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a pre-workout and a BCAA. And so we launched those last, gosh, almost a year ago. It was in August or September, August of last year. Yep. And, um, and so that was going great. It, we never intended for it to be some huge supplement company. We always intended it for, I mean, we were going to just see what happens, but we we're like, well, let's just, you know, launch some stuff yeah. that we love and, We'll keep doing more flavors of stuff that we love and just see what happens kind of thing. And so it was in December of last year that I got a call from um, Transform Supplements, and that's Chris and Heidi Powell's company. And they were like, hey, we, you know, we want you to come and we're looking for more trainers to be part of, you know, our, the faces of our company. And we want you to, would you be at all interested? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, same story. It's funny to tell all these stories together. Like, yeah. I, kinda, I like what I've got going on. It's fine. Kind of yeah. thing, you know, yeah. and they call back and call back. And finally I'm like, okay, yeah, let's, let's talk. And we, it was about probably like five months of going back and forth and negotiations and everything. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I will not come unless I can bring my supplements. And they're like, deal. I was like, okay, done deal. And so those are still in the process of being reworked. They should be out. The, the goal is next month. Um, but nice. they're going to be a trainer with the signature series with transform nice. supplements. And so, yeah, so now I'm working with Chris and Heidi Powell, who's I've, I've looked up to for years and years yeah. and I've known them since about 2016, um, kind of like idolized them, just looked up to them and their, you know, their knowledge and where they are in the space. But yeah, yeah. now I text, um, now I text them. And so that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, it's so crazy. I know I've had moments like that too, girl, where it's like, you just, you keep pushing into what you're passionate about. And I'm like, 
oh my gosh. That's so I used to like, I don't know, watch these people podcasts or follow them. And now they're just my friends. Yeah. It's so bizarre, <laughs> but yeah. that's what happens when you so follow crazy. your dreams, you know? And when you have yeah. good intentions, I think too, like the universe has got your back, you know, it's just like, yes, here you I go, totally here agree. you go. And yeah, it's just been so cool to watch your story. And we're, yeah, we're definitely the friends that I'm like, I, I appreciate having you in my life. Cause we get super excited for each other when yes, cool stuff we happens. Do. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, so fun. So, okay. So now like, what is the, what's going on with your business right now that people can partake of? Do you have a, don't you have a boot camp coming up? Well, well actually it started, group two started today. So by the time this launches, we'll probably be closed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Releases, but I don't know what's the word. For How often Release. are your boot camps? now um, they're every 12 weeks okay and so the next one will be in september so all right guys september. yeah yes we yeah. do one-on-one -on -one coaching at any time yeah um and i've got cookbooks out and 30-day programs if you just want something to buy kind of like your programs too tara yeah and it's so. is it moxie by Lindsay? is that what's your website yeah it's just moxie by and it's ey ey I, well, my name it's is ey yep Yes. Moxie, yes. M-O-X-I-E. And we'll put the links in there by yeah, Lindsay yeah. E-Y. Yeah. And you, all of her coaches are on yeah. there. You guys can see it. And we love Lindsay. Make sure you follow Lindsay on Thank social. You. She's just always so fun and full of light and real. And <laughs> I just adore you. And uh, obviously you. she's on Facebook. It. She's got her tribe on Facebook as well. Yeah. Um, anywhere else, anywhere else they should find you? Well, I mean, I'm on YouTube. I don't post okay. much there, but there's, there's a YouTube okay. channel. If you want okay. to see bikini stories, then they're on there. <laughs> okay. Right on. Yeah. If you want to follow her journey a little bit, cause yeah, yeah. I've seen some of yeah. your stuff from back in the day on there, but Lindsay, thank you so much guys. We're recording yeah, this on like 4th of July weekend. She's staying on late on a Friday with me to do this. So I appreciate you. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. All right. Love you girl. Thank you <laughs> so too. much. Yeah.